best of the Commander. best. We are got no regrets. What's the plan? Yes. GSM. Kaboom, baby! Go on. From Seoul, Korea, and welcome to GSL Codes. Our Joseph, how are you doing today, man? Oh man, I'm doing wonderfully tasteless. Uh, here we are. It's the last day of the round of 16. It's an insanely good group. You know, we have uh, we have two Protoss gods. We, we have do. the pre T and the best cheeser for Terran in the world. That's true. Um, I don't know who's going to get out of today's group. This uh, GSL Codas has been so epic. Well, we um, some yeah. of the best games we could ever ask for. Yeah, hands uh, down. Seriously, like especially last week, we had amazing ones. I think today will definitely be better than yesterday. Yesterday was kind of like really one-sided in all the yeah, matches. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that yesterday was a good day to learn StarCraft Two, but not to be entertained. Yeah, if that makes sense. It was like. One build countering another build, mm. very one-sided. You could see one why. One player countering another player. Yeah, in the case exactly. of MVP versus Marine King, uh, or in the case of um, um, a curious being. I mean, talk about a poor, poor guy gets his playstyle countered so badly. Yeah, yeah, he finally mixed it up some man, and it did not bode well. It did well not for him. work apparently. But uh, today is pretty glorious. We got a lot yeah. of great games today uh, coming out. It's you know we have one guy that's a definite underdog, Hart. Okay. You know, yeah, Hart, if you uh, are just now joining us for this uh, segment of Code S, uh, Hart has been cheesing pretty hard. He has, and that's just like his style. He's actually like the best at executing it that we've well, really seen. He's got his own cheeses that we just have never seen before. Yeah. I mean, I can um, see what's going on in the other players' heads. So they're like, what? And then he, they lose. He always knows know how what. to win with them. And yeah. I actually, he always pulls the right number of SCVs. I'm not even saying that as a joke. Yeah, he actually, it's interesting because someone said recently somewhere that like, uh, you know, watching other Terrans cheese after watching Hart, you gain an appreciation for Hart's actual skill because yeah, sure. a lot of people just don't execute like him. Like, he will actually, if there's still any way to win with his cheese, with a follow-up one, by going in macro, by whatever, he knows how to do it. So, I mean, he's, it's, I love having him in the Code S. I never thought that he'd get this far in the Code S to be in the round of 16, but here he is. Well, he's playing well. Know, if you look at like Code S, like an experiment, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see. Like, we're going to find out how far can somebody who plays like this actually get. Yeah. I mean, cheesing actually has its merits. It, it does. does. It it's, does win games or nobody would do it. Of course. So. Of course. And, uh, I mean, there's a, overall cheese players like don't get the same recognition and things, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Okay, it takes a lot longer to practice some of the other things. It's uh, overall mechanically harder to execute a lot of the other things like macro play, and over time, macro players win. That's it. That's the bottom line. You'll yeah. never have the best player in the world for very long, and it will never happen from here on where the best player in the world is a cheese player. Like, maybe yeah, in mean, the beginning during the beta and well, stuff, you can, but... I, yeah, I mean, because once the game gets figured out, then the games are supposed to get longer. Yeah. As we can see with this Code S, these are the, this is the lo uh, longest days we've had of GSL Code S. I guess yesterday was the exception. Yeah. Uh, ended pretty... Um, well, not quickly, but on a normal four-hour block for us. So, um... You know, it's 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 interesting to see somebody like this. How far can you get, especially with unique cheese like him? Yeah. All right, so yesterday uh, we had, like we said, uh, I would not say the most entertaining games of Code S, but I would definitely say some very educational ones. MVP, Marine King, get out. That's right. And JYP, unfortunately, with Curious following to Code A, uh, the round three. And, I mean, they'll have their shots get back up. Curious. He always goes through code A, man. Yeah. He will probably be back just because he is really solid. He can't have an unlucky like day like that probably ever again in his life. At least he got it out of the way, right? <laughs> yeah, at least he got that worst day of his career out. He shouldn't have killed that black cat with the mirror before he came. Man. Exactly, right, right after he ran under that ladder yeah. um, and wished his uh, victory on a cursed monkey's paw. So uh, <laughs> that's it. So today, uh, we have some really... <laughs> Regular some monkey's paw is fine, but not a not cursed Not a one. cursed monkey's paw. What are you doing? Yeah. All right, today we got Squirtle, Heart, Hero, and Leenok. 
And that is right, Tasteless. I am so excited for today's group. Let's take a look at these players. Squirtle, one of the strategic leaders, one of the biggest badasses Protoss has seen in StarCraft 2. Oh, yeah. Then we got Complexity's Heart. He cheeses a lot, but he's very intelligent about how he does it and does mix in some macro games. Yeah, absolutely. Then a Hero. He's hero, guys. He is so creative. He plays Protoss different from everyone. Definitely a strategic leader with his own style. And of course, Lee Nock. Is he child form of Nesty? I believe is he, he is. Is he even from this planet? We don't know, but we do know that he's one of the most talented StarCraft II players ever. Now our first match is going to be Squirtle against Heart. Now, you know, here's what I'm excited about um, is just Squirtle. He's such a smart player, but at the same time, you know, you get somebody like Heart. You know, Squirtle does lose to Cheeses. He's That's been cheese right. out of GSLs before. Yeah, this is if Heart had to choose someone to play against first round here, I think Squirtle. it's Squirtle. Yeah. yeah. Because he actually has a chance here, man. Squirtle does fall to cheese from time to time. He absolutely does. Yeah. So. Squirtle's like, he focuses so much on macro and strategy that sometimes his micromanagement is lacking a bit. Sometimes his early game uh, holding of things is a little bit worse than some other Protosses. He's even admitted, in fact, that his micro is his weak point. Yeah. Which we actually barely have players do nowadays. That's true. All right. Everyone thinks they're so perfect. <laughs> they're not. All right, guys, get ready for the first game and the first set here for the final round of 16 here, final day of round of 16 here. Squirtle up against Hart, Brodoss versus Terran on the map. Whirlwind here in the GSL Codex. GSL. Whirlwind. And now to introduce our two players. In the upper right, we have a Protoss legend, a GSL finalist. So smart. Uh, and very uh, strategic as far as his play goes. He is. Tate Squatter. So as you can see here, uh, last games, uh, last games five and five. Yeah. <laughs> and in the bottom left, we have our Terran player. Uh, he's a little bit cheesy, um, but he's really good at it. And I honestly, I think this could be a big challenge here for Squirtle. This player's ID is... Complexity Hard. Oh, a lot better recent record there from Hart. And if you look at the people he's taken out, um, you know, people like Nanny Wong, uh, impressive stuff. Indeed it is. Uh, some of the top role players. All right, so Whirlwind PBT. Uh, this is going to be an uphill battle for Hart. His style overall doesn't mesh so well with this map, especially cross spots. So I do wonder what he's going to go for this game. It looks like he's going to open up with a fast expansion, which is fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, look, if you're going to be one of these guys that gets far um, doing a lot of all-ins, doing a lot of uh, the timings and cheeses, you do have to implement a certain amount of macro or you will just never uh, get that far. I know you and I used to joke about, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, Icy Cup. Whoa, my God, Hart has 4.7%. For those of you guys who don't um, know Icy Cup, that was the original StarCraft 1 uh, ladder. It was probably the most competitive gaming ladder ever. Ever, 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 and ever, 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 ever. Like to put it in more perspective. More so than Game Eye. Yes. Like, to put which... this into perspective, <laughs> like, when StarCraft 2 first came out, everybody who was in Masters, guys, almost all those people were D and above on iCup. That D is the starting rank you yeah. get on iCup. So that just goes to. Yeah, you yeah. can actually drop down to D minus. If you and that ever was it. played IC Cup, you were in the top league of StarCraft 2. Literally. That's how hard it Literally. IC Cup was. IC Cup was harder than playing on. Uh, how do I say this? Playing on Masters on like North America. Oh, it was, like, much it was, harder. It was, it was much was, harder. In so, fact, it, well, it was infinitely hard. Like, can't it, even really explain it. Ha it's hard to really explain guys. it, guys, but like. It, like, think of every single pro gamer in Korea, you could play all of them because they were all on it. They playing. were all on there. 
Yeah. It's like them taste their toast with some white rum. So why were we talking about Icy Cup? <laughs> uh, I don't because, even remember. Okay, no, no, I, 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 had a, I had a point to this. So, um, on uh, on Icy Cup, and you and me, you know I've joked about this before, you would have um, players who would stay right at the B minus rank. Yeah. So they tended to be Zergs very often. Uh, the Zergs had always all in. Yeah. They always went to Hatchmuta. Yeah. Or they always made a bunch of speed links and hoped uh, that you know you didn't have anything at uh, the bottom of your, your ramp to defend beyond a few Marines. Mm -hmm. And those guys were good. And I only taste the B minus and I Cup is actually it's very like, impressive. It's very impressive. Okay. But they never got past B minus because they could not incorporate enough macro. Cheese I think has much more of a place in a best of three than it does, for instance, on a ladder. It does. In fact, you know this is something that uh, I'm always shocked with when I play. When I, you know, when I'm playing a lot of StarCraft, I'm hitting players that are obviously very good. Yeah. You know, they have a lot of uh, points. They're they're ranked quite highly and stuff. But they're just saying they're cheesing every single game. Yeah. And I gotta ask myself, like, what is your long-term plan here? I see that you have, for instance, let's say, a clan tag of a professional team in Korea. So you're obviously on their B team. So. Here you are thinking, well, if I cheese every game and get high in the ladder, maybe then I'm a pro gamer. No, you're not. It's unfortunate. Yeah, but exactly. You have to be able to mix in everything. And Hart is doing that this game. This is exactly. what he's doing. He's gone for the triple command center. He's going for a slightly greedy macro build here against Squirtle. And Squirtle, knowing the style of Hart. And also knowing that he's, uh, uh, Squirtle loses to cheese a lot. Yeah. And, I mean, Squirtle's kind of preparing. You know, he's gone uh, for the very fast expansion off of one Zealot and one Stalker. A very safe way to do it. Into four gates. So this is going to not only allow him to put on some pressure, but be safe against early crazy attacks that Hart may do. So exactly, actually a very intelligent, nice game, uh, nice opening from both players. And you know, this is exactly why, for instance, Hart is not one of those B minus Zergs on iCup. That's right. It's, it's because he can, <laughs> That's he can play like this or do the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you have it. So and it looks like we're going to have a, a, a potential bust here. You know, already two bunkers up. Hart is moving out, too. If he doesn't lose all these units right here, I think he should be able to hold. All right, he sees stuff going on. He sees the shenanigans. Yep. Looks like he's going to get that one yeah. Marine. Brings up his SCVs. He's safe. He's not going to die. But Squirrel can still do a lot of damage here. He, he might be able to pick off SCVs. SCVs. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, uh, you know what? With four sentries and he's waiting for another warping round, this is still going to be a super powerful attack that's going to be hard to hold. All right, Guardian Shield is up. And yeah, I mean, he's going to have to back out. There's. I think after the next round, he will go back up, though. It might be a little bit more stalker base. He's not a chrono boost in his gateway, so I guess he really is not expecting to win with this. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you see those two bunkers and SCVs already up there, that's right. going to be a tall order to win. Uh, but no, I guess he's he's not poking back up. I thought for sure he'd go up and maybe just sacrifice a few Zalts to kill, you know, four or five SCVs, something like that. But Squirtle, just defending oh, for this now. this SCV might actually get up there. Oh, wow. Oh, man. And, oh. He's sorry to go up that ramp. Decided to turn he's around. He's a lot of Guardian Shields for peaks. Mm. Yeah, I think he's trying to scare him into keeping SCVs up there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit of energy to cost a little bit of money. It's not a terrible idea. But uh, when you have six SCVs um, not mining, that's actually a lot of money lost. Yeah, it is. I think a lot of times people view the SCV dying as the only time it's a big deal as far as the economy goes. Mm. Actually, even if they're just not mining. Very true. That you're you're in a lot of trouble. No, you're you're definitely gaining an advantage. It's a different type of advantage, but it's still an economical one. Yeah. Now, you know he did get to squ scout that Squirtle's going for Robo. No big surprise there. Squirtle's a Robo player. Okay, this guy goes Colossus. It's what he does. Uh, <laughs> he's also getting double forge here, so Squirtle's gearing up for a longer game. You know he did open that four gate, but it's not a big deal with such a long map, and he's in pretty good shape. But. Uh, Hart with his double command center opening and stopping the four gate Dennis tracks losing nothing. Economically, look at this man. He's got he's got the triple command, of course, but 56 SCVs against 46 probes. So Hart has actually taken a little lead with a good build order choice. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, looks like he's going to go ahead and move out here. The factory, of course, going along with the army because uh, there's always a chance that stalkers in the back for instance are going to hit that factory. And he can scout with it. He's not going to make factory units in this matchup. Yep. So we have an idle uh, stalker here that uh, for some reason Squirtle is left behind. Yeah, just forgot about that warp in. Yeah, clearly. And uh, you know what? Squirtle actually is going to six gates, but we don't see any other tech other than Immortals being made. Is he going to just go for 
a Nexus? Yep, he actually is. He's sending a probe over there now. Huh, interesting. Okay, so he's actually just staying... Uh, he's focusing on upgrades. He's getting that Twilight to continue upgrades. There we go, the Robotics Bay just now. Okay, just a little bit later Robotics Bay. This is actually an interesting little variation uh, where he utilizes Gates a little bit more and got some extra Immortals. But, huh, that's interesting to keep an eye on this. Twilight Council's almost done, and that's going to be synced up with the uh, plus two uh, or two two upgrade. Okay, nice move by Hart. That's always a sign of a good player. Whenever you get outside the Protoss' base with your army like this, with your map control, just scan your army, you will like almost always find an observer over you or somewhere out there because the Protoss has to be ready to throw up their uh, Guardian Shield and Force Field right before you run in, if you do run in. Mm -hmm. So that's always a great little move. And when you kill that observer, then they have to choose to either stop making Immortal and Colossi yeah. um, or be in the dark. Exactly, and any one of those choices is good for you. Well, he sees that a third base is on the way. Of course, Hart has taken his third as well. He is up by like 30 supply already, which is pretty impressive. And uh, he started his Viking production actually before uh, Squirtle has really gotten any Colossi out. So that's, yeah, he's already got two Vikings, two more on the way, and the first Colossi isn't done. So Hart is just in a really good spot overall. In fact, he's adding the Ghost Academy already. And if he throws up another Starport, I mean, he's going to be feeling great. Yeah, Hart's actually looking uh, like in superb. Even if you just look at the supplies, actually, 125 to 161. Yeah. I wonder uh, actually how much cheesy we are going to see from Hart here. Because uh, we play like this without cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> what we've been mentioning as well, he can play macro games. He yeah. does occasionally from time to time. Thing is, when he does it, it's not a standard safe macro game. Like, you might see someone like Tage, a dude just a safe macro game where he's like, well, you know, I'm going to hit my third command center a little bit later right. because I can do that and be safe and win the macro game. Whereas Hart, he'll do something like very quick triple command. Right. Because he knows that he needs just a little edge when he's going for that because it's not the style he uses as much. Well, he hasn't gotten his additional gases yet um, at his expansion, but his economy is pretty balanced so far. Mm -hmm. um, now, it looks like in about the next minute or two here, Hart is going to max out. Uh, he timed out the Ghost perfectly. The last few units he gets before he finishes basically his army masterpiece. Yep. He is getting his second starport as well, so that's really good to see. Uh, one thing to mention is that he didn't get Mobius Reactor, which is interesting to me. He might have just forgotten that. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder, actually, if, um, if, uh, excuse me, uh, Squirtle, excuse me, is going to uh, actually hold here if Hart stims and runs in. You know, I think he does. It's oh, They both have 2-2 two, two upgrades. He only has one Colossus, sure, but he has the Immortals mixed in. He has a lot of Sentry Energy, and here we go! All right, uh, stimming up. No EMP shot. Oh, there we go. Now one EMP shot out now. Picking up the units in right. front of the force fields and backing off. Beautiful pullback by Squirtle. Now pulling he, the Zealots back as soon as the units in front of the force fields were killed. Now, it's, now note that um, he actually uh, does still have a lot of force fields here. So we could see it again. And there it is. He has empty medivacs up there close. Very nicely done. Still a lot of units down there. He's got to get another warping around. And there it is. He's shaved off a good amount of the supply. Now 130 to 170. And I Hart think Squirtle will barely hold this off. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, he might try brushing up again unless Squirtle miscontrols. Yeah, if Squirtle right. miscontrols. He will die. So he has to be careful. I love that that yeah. we just saw. He actually has a Colossi almost finishing, and he's gonna want another warping round as well as that Colossi before he engages again. Very Great nice. preventive force fields. And if you notice, he saw those preventive force fields come up pretty quick. So hmm, wait a second. He scanned his army again. Killed another observer. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's very good to point out. Actually, uh, did he just do it again? I think he's killed that uh, three observers. I believe game. you're right. I believe you're right. He's certainly staying on top of it. There's just one oh, observer hey, left. He might actually stim and run up there now if he sees that his army's on low ground. Yeah, the army is a little bit out See, of position for Squirtle's in the dark. Squirtle's in the dark. And he is going to go up here now. Oh, some nice EMPs going off on big chunks of the army. Another nice one going off. But actually, Squirtle's army is pretty scary right now. Hart is going to have to be very careful. Uh, he does not want to lose his medevacs here. Yeah, he did lose the Colossus. He's kiting pretty well. There's not enough energy for uh, enough force. Actually, I guess there's not enough energy for any force skills here. And actually, this death ball, if he kites it right, Squirtle's going to be in a lot of trouble, actually. Also got to be careful that we do have more warpins coming. Squirtle is going to finish up 3-3 very soon here, and another Colossi does join his army. Now note that Hart is taking a fourth in the bottom center. 
So That's right, but you know what? Squirtle has a Warp Prism out in the map at this point. A great choice, uh, especially for this map, and he is starting to harass a little bit with it. All right, he scans again. I don't think he should go up there now. Is, is Psystorm is written research, right? Uh, I will check on that. He does not have Psystorm, okay, no. Not. It's just for our cons at the moment. Really nice EMP. He's basically hitting everything here. Yeah, those Archons, though, they have full shields, so he's going to have to be careful about that. Now, with the sentries, those are just sitting in the front doing nothing, basically. Those are worthless units when they get emp And in fact, Art with a nice split here. He's got to do something. He's because, gonna get that Colossus. Oh, uh, no. he has to. Oh, this is bad news, actually, for Hart. If he doesn't do something huge here, the Zealot harassment from Squirtle has been out of control. He's Whoa. actually killed during this. 23, 23 SCVs. SCVs have been killed in this game, guys. Yeah, he's he we, has we done a huge amount of damage. Yep, made this one right lift there. off, and the other base had a ton of SCVs, and he just he slaughtered them, man. He slaughtered them. All right, as you can see here, Zealot's been picked off. Or will be picked off here. Nice mic here by heart. Until that Marauder died, it was pretty nice mic. <laughs> now, if you notice, um, despite all this, Hart has a supply lead. Basically, we've been watching Squirtle, uh, the, you know, the tides of, of Hart hitting up against Squirtle, splashing up against him. Uh, he hasn't gone underwater yet. Well, but, uh, he's, you know, he's a turtle, so he actually he's comfortable underwater, that's so that's, that's right. actually fine. Of course, uh, turtles do not, in fact, have gills, so he'll have to come up eventually. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Also, they're reptiles, cold blooded tasteless. Turtles oh, are cold blooded. I gotta get on that, man. <laughs> Squirtle to turtle. Alright, we do have Squirtle now, moving across the map. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be a good idea. A lot of this is gonna come down to control the army. Yeah, I think he's trying to utilize his Colossus while he can, knowing that there's probably not a huge Viking count. But actually, you know what? There are there is a huge Viking count. So I don't I don't like this uh, this move out all that much. The, yeah. In fact, the observer sees how many Vikings are. There's ten right there, and he's gonna turn oh out one guy immediately. Not exactly in a good position here, of course. Squirtle stimming now. Well, the Vikings just destroying the Colossi. He's got to kite non-stop here, though. You know, the that Colossi never got to do their job here. He's going to land the Vikings. Uh, uh, however, I think there's enough Immortals to back there. He's landing more Vikings now, which are basically just there to... No, actually, Squirtle's well, got this. Yeah, he, he just simply has enough. Uh, good job by him, you know. GG. Wow. Damn. Hart, you know what? Hart really powered up for that three-base attack. Several times he almost broke Squirtle there, but Squirtle stayed calm. Uh, you know what? He he really did. It was actually quite impressive. He got right up to his 3-3, held everything off just right, and then moved for the counterattack after his Zealots killed a ton of SCVs. I think I think uh, Hart actually needlessly attacked into Squirtle a little bit too much. You can see Hart's actually really good, though, man. No, he played a very he's, good he's game. He's really solid. He's playing against I think maybe the most solid Protoss in the entire world I right now. I think so. I have to agree with you. Uh, Squirtle's very balanced. Now, you know, in that in that game, um, I think what he needed to do is once he realized, okay, I'm not going to break Squirtle, he needs to actually contain him and just make sure Squirtle doesn't get a fourth for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. he has his third barracks explosion. Yeah. And he can just keep refilling his army. You know, a couple of his attacks were close to breaking Squirtle. Someone with uh, lesser control may have had a very hard time there. Yeah, and when we say Squirtle's uh, admits not having the best micro, I mean, he's still, there's different still insanely good. Oh, that's micro. true. And there's different types of micro as well. There's, like, fancy micro, like what Hero has. Yeah. Where, like, if Hero has Blink Stalkers, he'll kill all sorts of stuff that you never thought he could. He'll, they'll never die, stuff like that. Squirtle, control and micro can be looked at like slightly differently. Like He knows how to control the battle. He knows the right yeah. things to do in the right order. Uh, he looks at where to put his units, you know, what stands in front of what, that type of thing. And uh, the way he controls his units are enough to hold that. You know, this isn't like a super technical thing that Hart's doing. This is still a macro battle. So. All right, well, he picked uh, Antigua Shipyard as his map. Uh, Good choice. Hart did. So, um, I mean, do, do we see what we know Hart for here, which is uh, the most complex, uh, innovative cheeses to date? Well, uh, you know what? This is definitely a map he could play that macro style on and still have a decent chance. Don't forget, drops here very good as Protoss takes the third base. Squirtle, I could see him doing some sort of crazy all in here. I don't know what to expect here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you go up against somebody who cheeses a lot. The best move is to actually just cheese them at the same time. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. There are cheeses that beat cheeses. Yeah. There's like a cheese wheel. Yeah, there actually is a cheese wheel. Yeah. There is a and wheel it has a cheese. lot of holes in it, man. It does. It does, Artosis.
They make Swiss cheese and wheels. They technically could make any cheese in a wheel. Well, I even mean, cottage I know, cheese, I but that would fall it, apart. I know you can make one. <laughs> We're going to get this game going. <laughs> All right, this is the GSL. GSL.